Dominica records its first case of the Zika virus. A study on leptospirosis to complement a renewed threat posed by the deadly disease. And a German research team recommends greater involvement by Kalinagos in policy decisions that affect them. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details after this. And first up, Dominica has confirmed, has recorded its first case of the Zika virus following tests carried out by the Caribbean Public Health Agency. Health Minister Dr. Kenneth Darrow has informed the media that an individual has contracted the mosquito-transmitted disease. This confirmed case does not have any history of traveling outside of Dominica in the recent past and constitutes a local transmitted case. This patient has since recovered well is currently at home and all immediate contacts have so far been deemed clinically healthy. To date, a total of 13 samples have been tested for Zika virus with only one being positive. The Ministry of Health and the Environment wishes to reassure citizens that there is no need for alarm. More health news now. There are plans to conduct a study on leptospirosis as the bacterial disease continues to pose a threat to the health and agriculture sectors. Idono John Baptist has more. Leptospirosis is transmitted to humans through the urine of infected rodents, dogs, and other mammals. In 2011, the country recorded the largest outbreak of leptospirosis with 29 cases and four deaths. While there are no suspected or confirmed cases currently, health authorities say this has been a problem since 2010. The Ministry of Health and Environment, in partnership with PAHU and the Ministry of Agriculture, will study the problem for the next six months. A study to assess the prevalence of leptospirosis was officially launched on Tuesday. This project for us is very timely and relevant as the transmission of leptospirosis in Dominica is of major concern to the Ministry of Health since we have had numerous cases reported since 2010. In order to adequately prevent and control the spread of leptospirosis, the need to study the factors contributing to its transmission is necessary. The study will be conducted over a period of about six months and is expected to analyze blood and urine samples from animals which potentially transmit leptospirosis. The study will assess the presence of lepto among rodents, dogs, and farm animals at selected areas. One of the aims of the study is to build capacity to monitor and prevent transmission of lepto. The success of the study, therefore, will depend on the cooperation of the public since assessment will be conducted at homes, business places, farms, and other areas where the public frequent. The findings of this research, therefore, will inform decisions to reduce the potential for transmission of leptospirosis in the country and build upon the knowledge base regarding this disease, not only in Dominica, but regionally as well. The Pan American Health Organization is funding the study to the tune of 15,000 U.S. dollars. Ido Najan Baptist, Channel 5 News. Still in health, the Ministry of Health and Dowasco are recipients of equipment which will enable them to efficiently monitor water quality. The water testing kits are complements funding by the Pan American Health Organization. PAHO's country program specialist, Shirley Augustine, handed over the equipment on Tuesday to representatives of Dowasco and the Ministry of Health. The kits contain all the necessary equipment for both chemical and bacteriological analysis of water on the field. Included is an incubator which can be connected to a car battery to grow microorganisms in order to assess the safety of water for drinking and recreational activities. Doasco's lab supervisor says the water field labs will spare them the time of having to go to their labs to conduct tests. Those field kits come in very handy because of our terrain, Dominica's terrain, the sources that we have to go to check water quality. With these kits, you can do the test right on the field. So you can delay as long as possible. There's also an incubator in included 
and icy petri dishes. So then you can do your micro bead test right on the field. And that assists you some, so because some of our, our intakes, they are so difficult and far. If you can do the test right on the field, by the time you reach to the lab, you don't have to do those tests anymore. In other news now, a group of German research students believe there is room for greater involvement by Kalinagos in policy decisions which will impact their lives. A team of third-year bachelor students in planning from the Technical University of Dortmund, Germany, is wrapping up a visit here this week. The students were here on a research project from the 25th of February to explore climate change adaptation in the Caribbean, and specifically here in Dominica. Their research centered around the vulnerability of the Kalinago territory to climate change. It was discovered that the Kalinago territory's issues were not promoted enough in what will be Dominica's national land use policy. Ultimately, the issue of Dominica's vulnerability to climate change will be integrated into the land use policy from the get-go, making sure that climate change is a key component of the National Physical Development Plan. While here, the German students met with the Physical Planning Division, the Office of Disaster Management, village councils, NGOs including the Red Cross, they visited hurricane shelters and areas prone to landslides, sea surging and flooding. The students also visited nine communities declared as special disaster areas and six added as critical impact areas and conducted workshops in the Kalinago territory. We received feedback and jointly brainstormed about proposals and plans for the future in regard to disaster preparedness and shelters. Our entire fieldwork, the interviews and workshops reflect our belief that adaptation to climate change, disaster preparedness and management has to be community-based. The local people have crucial knowledge and experiences that need to be integrated into national level analysis and planning. When it comes to planning for disasters, it is necessary to involve the affected people and plan with them in instead just for them. The minister responsible for postal services, Justina Charles, is worried about possible money laundering activities that can likely occur within the postal services sector. Charles was appointed to take over the portfolio of postal services last Monday. She told Channel 5 News her mission is to ensure that service is effectively delivered. I am aware that we have to look at well, this, the post office, we have the central post office and we also have little outlets in quite a few of our communities where the postal services are offered. It, it, it covers delivery of, of stamp services, um, you have bulk mailing, you have, you know, you have uh, money orders, you have all of those kinds of things that you have to be dealing with. My whole objective and aim is to ensure that, that we deliver that service in a very effective and efficient and very, very credible way. I think because that is one of the areas that quite a bit can happen if you do not really pay special attention to what is happening. The minister says she wants to ensure that the service is in keeping with governments and the region's policies and not compromise on its security. For example, if we have to look at one of the things that can happen quite easily in those places is money laundering, you know, can happen. And so we have, we have to be cognizant of the kinds of things that can happen and so that we can pay special attention to ensure that we do not fall prey to some of those things. So I'm expecting the minister, the ministry responsible for public works and ports under which, under which ministry that portfolio was, I'm expecting them now to hand over to myself, the permanent secretary, the senior executive officer, so that they can apprise us of what exists now and what, you know, the, the whole policies within the postal services so that we now as a ministry can sit and look at what exists and see how we would want to make it very effective and efficient. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, why investment in disaster management could be a good thing for other critical sectors. Thank you for staying with us. Charges dropped against a young man while another has pleaded guilty for the 2012 Independence Day murder of a Girodel woman. Clarence Lewis of Newtown and Bernie Samuel of Gutter Village were charged with the murder of Marvin Robinson in 2012. However, when they appeared at High Court Monday, Samuel pleaded not guilty and Lewis pleaded guilty. As a result, the prosecution dropped the murder charge against Samuel. He was expected to be released from the state prison on March 15, where he had been on remand awaiting trial. 
Lewis will be sentenced on the 8th of April. 75-year-old Marvin Robinson was stabbed several times about her body at her home. In more news now, one urban planning and climate change researcher believes it would be in the nation's best interest to prioritize disaster management investments to complement support from the international donors. The professor who has been on a research visit here says the international donor community is committed to supporting Dominica through funding and technical expertise, not just for the recovery after a tropical storm like Erica, but for long-term strengthening of disaster preparedness and response. But he says this willingness on the side of the donors to provide support for disaster preparedness must be matched by a similar prioritization on the part of government. Storm Erica showed that even a small event can have catastrophic effects and create severe and very costly uh, damages. You know, recovery from Storm, I mean, Storm Erica has thrown the country back in terms of economic development, but also public f funds that are available. Um, and this will continue to be a serious drain on, on governmental um, funding. He says investments in disaster preparedness is a good investment and not only is necessary for responding to a disaster, but it protects public funds in many other areas. Because now public funds in many ministries are being sucked into and need to be committed for recovery from a relatively small weather event. Um, so therefore, um, not prioritizing disaster management investments is in the end more costly and it reduces the country's ability to develop in other policy areas as well. This is, we feel, a, a very important, you know, takeaway lesson that we have learned from the many discussions here. Um, disaster preparedness, disaster management is not one of several other policy areas, but it benefits the development of Dominica in, in all of its areas. In, in, in all sectors. And speaking of investment, government is still interested in sourcing a ship to export the country's produce. Idona John Baptist has more. Although Oliver Serafin, director of a shipping company which owns two ships, has made a proposal to government to partner with him for the business of agricultural exports, government is yet to sign on to that offer. Trade Minister Ian Douglas says government continues to work on the plan to acquire a ship from different aspects. We have to look at those negotiations because Oliver Serafin have made some proposals and in short, not getting into the details, he have proposed either one that government can buy the boat that he has, but government is not interested in buying a boat because government is not interested in getting involved in the business of running a boat. If a private sector person has a boat and they need some help, then government can come on board to help them in that respect. Secondly, he also proposes a joint venture. The joint venture means that each party has shares. How much shares will government um, hold in the boat? How much shares will the boat owner hold in the boat? Who actually owns the boat? All of those issues have to be, have to be um, settled before. Serafin had complained that the negotiation process was drawn out. This is what he told Channel 5 News last month. The government has, as I understand it, been uh, very desirous of some kind of cooperation with someone to bring a boat. We've brought the boat, and so we would expect that government would be jumping and dancing and seeking our attention, and um, it's happening to an extent, but there are some areas of darkness in terms of our understanding as to clarity as to where they see us and where we see them. So we expect that government will certainly come around. I had meetings with the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister is very focused on about his need for a boat. But Douglas says government has to be clear on aspects of Seraphine's proposal. The proposal has financial implications so it has to be vetted uh, and, and, and it has to be examined by the Ministry of Finance and after that happens it has to go to to cabinet for cabinet's blessings on it. So, so, so these processes must take place before we can say conclusively that we are entering into an agreement. Douglas recognizes, however, there is a need to fill the void of a lack of transportation in the fresh produce sector for abroad. We have in fact um, expressed the intention to source a ship. The hucksters and the people in the industry that you speak to tell you that there is a massive interest 
um, for Dominican fresh produce. In the USVIs, in Totola, there are boxsters in Dominican businessmen who ship 20 foot containers every week to those markets and they tell you that they could do more um, if transportation was available. What we have now is tropical shipping reaching those markets, but tropical shipping takes two weeks to get to destinations that an ordinary boat will take 10 hours to get to. Take, for example, Martinique. The competitive business unit of the OECS Commission is continuing efforts at marketing and exporting local products and services. Business Development Officer with the Creative Industries branch of the CBU made the disclosure during an interview with Channel 5 News. The CBU is focused on music and artists from the OECS region. We helped to train a group of songwriters and producers and um, we've done a compilation of, of the songs coming out of the training exercise that are going to be launched um, sometimes this year. It has been a while in the making, um, so we're going to be launching that. We have, we, we have a delegation actually from the OECS actually visiting Europe now. Um, they, are going to be look, they are looking at possibilities for engagement with um, the music industry in Europe, in particular France, the UK, Germany and Sweden. Basically to look at how we can sell some of the artists and, and to promote the work that we're doing. The Creative Industries branch will also be paying close attention to those involved in the fashion industry. We did an extensive um, research in terms of trying to find out the status of the garment industry in the OECS. And what it has done is it has given us the information and, and, and so a database upon which we can work now. So we know who are the designers in, 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 in the apparel and accessory market. And what, we, what we're going to be doing is basically um, looking at ways in which we can support some of the ongoing work. We, we sent a group of designers to a trade show in Barbados last year. And also we had a group of designers at a regional um, forum that was hosted by St. Lucia at which we discussed the regional sec um, fashion sector and how the OECS can play a part in that. And in April, 15 craft designers are set to benefit from a week-long training workshop in Guadeloupe to help develop and better market their craft. And operations at Douglas Charles Airport continued as normal on Tuesday in spite of partial flooding on the outskirts of the terminal building. Around mid-morning, excess water from the Melville Hall River entered the pickup and drop-off section of the airport. Sources tell Channel 5 News the river subsided around midday. Normally, when there is excess water in the river, special drains situated at the airport help to empty out the excess back into the natural waterway. However, damage caused by Erica affected that process. Consequently, excess water empties out into the parking lot area. A reliable source told us no flights were cancelled as a result. We were also informed that uh, Seaborne Airlines cancelled early morning flights into the island due to technical difficulties on their part since Monday night. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. Hello everyone and here are your sports highlights. First up in sports, a three-man FIFA team is currently on island reviewing the effectiveness of the Dominica Football Association as a body. The FIFA development officer Howard McIntosh says the review is for the benefit of the DFA. The de entire delegation is here on a mission really coming out of the Dominica Football Association's participation in the FIFA performance program. And so the delegation is here to really help analyze what is happening at the DFA and in that analysis come up with certain recommendations. McIntosh says further assistance to the association is among the objectives of the review. And discuss ways of, of FIFA, of providing FIFA support, additional support to the, the DFA and to discuss action plans on the way forward. He says the DFA has great potential, however the onus is on them to perform. The, the DFA has tremendous possibilities ahead and it's going to be up to them to, to work with us and work with the key stakeholders to ensure that their objectives are achieved and the objectives of football are achieved. And I should say that we, we leave, we're, we've even been we're now even more positive than we were when we came, based on the meetings that we've had. 
In cricket, Volcanoes suffered a heavy defeat against Jamaica in the ninth round of the regional four-day tournament on Monday. Winning by nine wickets, Jamaica batted first, scoring 445 all-out with John Campbell and Devon Thomas recording centuries of 135 and 122 respectively. Delroy Johnson stirred some trouble for Jamaica, picking up four for 84 for Volcanoes. Owen Woods, in reply, scored 233 with no Volcanoes batsman, topping Sunil Ambrose's 50 runs in the first innings. Winwards following on, made 350 all-out, complements the efforts of Devon Smith, 126, Jolani Robinson, 64, and Liam Sebastian, 52. Jamaica, in their turn at the crease, posted 143 for one. John Campbell scored 83, while S. Thomas supported with 52. In the other matches, Barbados beat Trinidad and Tobago by seven wickets. The scores, Barbados 396 and 74 for three, targeting 71. TNT 226 and 240 following on. And Leewards and Guyana played to a draw with scores 430 in favor of Leewards and 109 and 222 for eight for Guyana. The point standing after round nine, Guyana 130, Barbados 123, Jamaica 82. Red Force 77, Leewards 48, and Volcanoes 47. Round 10 is carded for March 18, where Guyana and Jamaica will go head-to-head -head and Hurricanes will take on Barbados. Still in cricket, we can tell you that West Indies women lost by 43 runs to Australia women on Monday. Final scores, Australia 136 for 3, West Indies women 96 all out in 19 overs. Still in sports. Twelve Dominican athletes have been confirmed for the 45th staging of the Curifta Games carded for Grenada. Shani Angol will compete in the Under-20 Girls Javelin, Sugeta Coffey and Natalie Roberts in the Under-18 Javelin and Naomi Scotland in the Under-18 Shot Put and Discus Throws. In the Under-20 Boys category, Kimo Benjamin will take part in the Shot Put and Discus, Jabez Ferrara 1,500 and 5,000 meter races, Cameron Carbon, 1,500 and 800 meter races, and Raheem Joseph, shot put and discus. The under 18 boys are Donelson Mahote in the 1 and 200 meter races, Joss Tuse, discus and shot put, Kian Burton, javelin and discus, and Camille Regis, javelin and shot put. The athletes will be accompanied by three coaches, including a chaperone. The competition runs from March 26 to 28. In primary school sports, the St. Mary's Primary had Savon Pie Primary under their heels for a 4-0 defeat in the first quarter-final match in the National Bank of Dominica Schools Boys Championships on Monday. Devon Philsbert found the back of the nets twice, while Shane Parlo and Kimar Phillip scored one each. Meantime, the last quarter-final match will take place on Wednesday, where Grand Four Primary will play host to St. Luke's Primary. That match is scheduled for 2.30 p.m. The semi-final and final are scheduled for March 22 at a venue to be announced. In more track and field, one more athlete joined the race in attempting to qualify for the Rio 2016 Olympics. National athlete Andre Basil left the island on Tuesday to undergo training in Mexico to better his chances of making the Dominican squad. Well, I was recently accepted into a center in Veracruz, Mexico, and I am about to go there um, next week to hopefully qualify for the Olympic Games. And I, it's not, it's not out of my reach, but with the help and support, I can get over there. I, I believe I can make it. Basil says he's determined and confident that he can qualify. My personal best is 67.03, but I've been training on my own for some time. And like I said, hopefully with the support of the Veracruz institution, I will be throwing a lot further than that. I believe. I am motivated and I believe that I can get there. If not get there, but extremely close to it. I'm going to work. That's the only thing I can do right now, work hard. I'm going to be running two day, three day sessions and I'll make it happen. Finally in sports, Dominica State College served the Pierre Child Secondary Girls a humiliating 62 point defeat on their home court in the sports division's under 20 basketball championship Monday. The scores were 72 10 at full time. Melissa Maglo had 38 points, while Meralda Andrew supported with 14 for State College. For Pierre Charles, Amanda Elise scored six points. The competition continues Wednesday between Portsmouth Secondary and the Dominica Grammar School Boys at the Benjamins Park. Starting time is 3 p.m. That's all the sports for now. I'm Kenny Williams. Join us again next time.
Coming up next, your weather report. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Carreta Joseph. We start off by taking a look at some earlier satellite imagery and what it showed is this area of cloudiness associated with a trough system currently affecting the area. Visible satellite imagery showed low-level clouds across the islands. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers across the islands. The Douglas Shells Airport recorded just about 5 millimeters of rainfall this afternoon. Conditions for tonight, cloudy with scattered showers. These conditions are expected to continue into tomorrow. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides, and falling rocks are advised to exercise some caution. Sea conditions, moderate in open water, with waves peaking near 7 feet. Weak unstable conditions will maintain cloudy skies with scattered showers through to Thursday. However, as we move into Friday, a relative improvement in conditions can be expected. Weak unstable conditions will maintain cloudy skies with scattered showers across the northern and central portion of the chain. However, partly cloudy conditions can be expected across the extreme southern portion. On the international scene, partly cloudy conditions in New York, London and Beijing, clear skies in Miami and some showers in Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.12 a.m. and set at 6.16 p.m. For updated information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. And just before we recap the headlines, right after the news, Mapping 2K4 will present a documentary titled Voices of Abused Children. The documentary was produced in 2002 on behalf of the Christian Children's Fund, UNICEF, and the Bernard Van Leer Foundation. Given its production time in 2002, viewers are advised that the statistics are those of that period and do not represent the current situation in Antigua, St. Vincent or Dominica. The three islands featured in Voices of Abused Children. In spite of this, the content is valuable to our understanding of our current situation, particularly as it touches the problem of reporting abuse and the issue of the family court. Also, this documentary provides salient pointers for mothers and parents in general who need more than ever to guard their children against sexual predators. 14 years after its first showing in 2002, Mapping 2K4 invites you to view Voices of Abused Children, produced and directed by Steinberg Henry and Francis Joseph. And now the headlines. Dominica records its first case of the Zika virus, a study on leptospirosis to complement re renewed threat posed by the deadly disease, and a German research team recommends greater involvement by Kalinagos in policy decisions that affect them. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can watch our past newscasts on our YouTube page. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris, and to all our viewers around the world, thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.